Hi, my name is Sheila. We are going to be looking at the lawsuit between Nicki Minaj and Nosy, I guess we'll say H-E-A-U-X, because I don't know if YouTube cuts that out. We're just going to call Nicki, the plaintiff, and Nosy, the defendant. This lawsuit is coming out of the Southern District of New York, filed in September 2022. We've got the plaintiff, the defendant. Nikki is suing, asking for a jury trial. Here's the first thing about this lawsuit that caught me completely off guard. It's only four pages. It's only four pages. I was thinking that they would be laying out all of the facts, everything that was said, putting it in quotations. I, I don't know. Just... I expected a whole lot more. I have not had a chance to look at the Cardi B complaint that was filed. I would be interested in comparing the two of those. Hmm, maybe that's a future video. This action is brought to vindicate the reputation of plaintiff, a superstar artist who is known as Nicki Minaj. The defendants herein have outrageously defamed plaintiff by posting a video on their Twitter page in which defendant Green, who goes by the name of Nosy, falsely and maliciously stated that plaintiff is a cokehead who is showing, shoving all of this up her nose. Further, lacking evidencing a fundamental lack of decency, Green has also posted vile comments about plaintiff's one-year-old son. While these comments are not actionable, they nonetheless demonstrate why punitive dam damages should be awarded in this case. Okay, so we're just in the first paragraph and already she's saying, not only did you come after me, you came after a child. Like, what is the reason for ever bringing a child into that situation? The child is one. I, I cannot imagine why that needs to be done. I did get a chance to see the comments about Nikki. I did not see the comments about the child. I, so I don't know what they were. I need to go back and take a look at those. Already in paragraph one, they are also asking for punitive damages. Already, we're there. Second paragraph, because this is short. This is four pages. We're in the second paragraph. That's going to be the end of the first page. In a different age, Green's lie would have been meaningless because she is the ultimate nobody, which they put in quotations, on information and belief. A person whose main accomplishments in life have been a string of criminal charges, bail jumping, and bad debts. Okay, all of this is new to me. I don't know this person that she is talking about. I have seen this person before um, doing this particular video, but I didn't really pay the person any mind because I don't really follow a lot of gossip gossip quite like that. So this is the first time I've ever heard of any of these allegations about the other person. But this is the age of social media, one in which a nobody can find an undeserved following through relentless self-promotion, like, what am I doing? Green is one of those nobodies as she posts content belonging to her wholly owned company. And she's got the company listed there. It says on multiple social media platforms. One of those platforms is her Twitter page, which has approximately 3,300 followers, which really isn't that much. But hey, if somebody's out there saying bad things about me, things that I think are, are bad and not true, you know, false statements about me. 3,300 people can turn into a snowball that exponentially grows into millions of people because you don't know how many followers those individual 3,300 people have. Green therefore has the means to publish a lie knowing that it will metastasize as it is retweeted by her followers and then further retweeted by the followers of her followers and so on. Exactly what I was saying. You got a snowball going on here. We're now in, in paragraph two. Now what I'm hoping they're going to do is dig down deeper into those numbers because that is really what's going to seal the deal and make this complaint sound like it has a lot of substance to it. What you don't wanna happen, you don't wanna write your complaint thinking that, oh, I'm just going to allege some things. And then when I get in court, I'm gonna bring in all my evidence. You really need to make a substantial showing with your complaint because the other person can then show up and say, hey, there's nothing here. I'm gonna file a motion to dismiss. Okay, 
we don't want that to happen if you're the plaintiff. So you need to make sure that you're putting enough in your complaint so that it can beat that motion to dismiss. Paragraph three, it looks like is where we get into a little bit of the numbers here. Paragraph three, that is what happened here. In just the day following Green's September 12th, 2022 publication of her lie, that plaintiff is a, her Twitter page, almost 2000 people had liked it. Imagine, you know, you're just at home doing your thing and you find out that 2000 people now like something that's not true about you. More importantly, more than 260 people had retweeted it, which led to a firestorm of social media attention, which was undoubtedly caused by multiple levels of subsequent re retweets. While social media is an extraordinarily effective vehicle for spreading lies, it does not confer a license to do so. Paragraph four, on information and belief, as discovery will likely reveal, because they're going after that information. So they're putting that out there. We're going to come for all of the numbers. We can see what's happened publicly. But remember, there's the whole behind the curtain, all the analytical data that you can pull up and look at and see what has actually been going on, you know, once these things have been posted. So it says, uh, on information and belief, and as discovery will likely reveal, Green has been acting as a proxy for another performer who, mistakenly believing that she and plaintiff are stars of equal stature, has repeatedly used other social media intermediaries in a hopeless effort to advance her career at plaintiff's expense. You guys, I am just an attorney, so this one's new to me. So it sounds like there's somebody else here who's involved. I don't know if this person's going to get a separate lawsuit thrown at them, or if she really is just saying, you know what, you're the one who said it, you're the one who, who is responsible, you're the one that I'm going after. However, the fact that Green was acting at the behest of another does not make her conduct less egregious or excuse her from the consequences of the damage she has caused the plaintiff to suffer. All right, then we've got the jurisdiction. Then we've got jurisdiction and venue. Let me stop here. Let me actually talk about the parties for a second because there is a little bit more information here that is important. Paragraph seven, we're almost at the end of page two. Plaintiff is a citizen of the state of California. She is one of the most successful and famous performers and songwriters in the world. She has sold over 100 million records worldwide, making her the best selling female hip hop performer of all time. She was ranked by Billboard as the seventh overall top female artist of any genre for the 2000 to 2010 time period. So she's laying this out. You know, I'm not just some nobody, but think about that for a moment. If you're just some nobody, well, first of all, nobody's really going to be going after you that hard. They kind of do like small town gossip. Yeah, I get it. It's out there, but your stuff's not going to get retweeted. It's just going to be all out there in your neighborhood so that everybody at the grocery store, post office and gas station knows your drama. In this case, yeah, she's laying it out. I'm up here. This is the work that I'm doing. Okay. I'm up here. I'm working hard. I'm a star. Paragraph eight, on information and belief, defendant Green is a citizen of the state of New York. According to her January 14th, 2021 application to trademark the name, she resided in New York County, New York. On information and belief, she now resides in Bronx County. Her LLC is under is organized under the laws of New York, and um, they're, they're stating that they believe that she is the sole member. Plaintiff's claim for relief. Okay, so Nikki, you're alleging all of this, Ms. Minaj. What is it that you want? What kind of relief do you want? Let's see. It says, for at least the past year, defendants have used the various social media platforms in an effort to demean and insult plaintiff. Efforts which were of no concern to plaintiff. Paragraph 12. However, the situation changed on September 12th, 2022. Okay, so you've been doing this for a long time. You've been talking about me. And typically that's what happens, you know. People 
There are two ways to think about this. People will say, I'm not going to respond because that's what they want. They want to drag me into this. Then that way, then they can say, oh, well, look, she responded. And then that ups, you know, that ups all of the attention and the eyeballs that they then get. So some people say, don't respond. Let them do their thing. They're going to do it anyway. Just let them go at it. Other people say, okay, I'm not going to have somebody out here putting all of this stuff out here, especially when it starts to concern their family members. Their family members didn't ask for that, you know? A child didn't ask for that. And that stuff's going to be out there forever following you wherever you go with whatever you want to do in your life. And then if you have children, those children are going to see that false those false statements that may be about you. So some people are, are of the mindset that, no, go take it now, I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna give you an opportunity. I'll send you a cease and desist letter. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to take it down. If you don't take it down, we're going to court because it's false and I'm not going to let it stay out there. There is something to that. I can totally understand people saying, you know, I have a right to be able to, to not let people just put false statements out there about me. I should not even have to deal with that. So no, if you don't take them down on your own, I'm going to help you with the legal system taking care of that for me. In paragraph 12, okay, now she's saying that all of a sudden on September 12th, that's when things change. That's when things change. I look a little ragged. Let's fix that. I'm upstairs. Or actually, I'm leaving. Just give me two minutes. I'll be out of the house. The situation changed on September 12, 2022, when defendants posted a video on her Twitter page in which Green stated, the plaintiff is shoving all of this up her nose, allegedly. Thank you, allegedly, but we all know it's true. Listen, I can't even say allegedly with that because I, we know it's true. I'm not saying allegedly on that. And that is what sounds like that is what it appears finally pushed Ms. Minaj over to say, I'm not going to be on this side anymore, just letting this person say something and trying to drag me into something. I'm now going to be on this side and we're going to go to court and handle it that way. Paragraph 13, Green's video statement was defamatory per se in that A, charged plaintiff with a serious crime, and B, tended to injure plaintiff in her trade, business, or profession. Paragraph 14, Green's video statement was false because plaintiff has never used cocaine. 15, Green, on behalf of herself and her LLC, made the Green video statement with actual malice in that they either knew that it was false or knew that there was a high probability that it was false. Yeah, so actual malice comes into play if you are a public figure, generally that's the standard. So if somebody is just a regular Jane or Joe and somebody makes statements, you know, they don't have to show actual malice. But if you're a public figure, public persona, public official, then there's this higher standard. That's what they're alleging in this complaint. The Green video statement was not protected by any privilege. The Green video statement constituted slander per se. By reason thereof, plaintiff has been damaged in an amount to be determined by the jury, by the jury, but which is in no event less than $75,000. We're saying that's the floor. In addition, because defendant's conduct was so willful, wanton, and malicious, Plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages in an amount to be determined by the jury. Plaintiff demands judgment as follows. An award of compensatory damages as determined by the jury in the minimum amount of $75,000. An award of punitive damages as determined by the jury. An award of costs and disbursements of this action. And an order granting such other and further relief as may be deemed just and proper by the court. Like, tell her to just stop saying falsehoods about me. Let that be one of them. That's it. Four pages, four pages, laying some things out. They put it all out there. They've kind of said, you know, Ms. Green, we're going to be coming after all of the information. We go through discovery. We're then going to use all of that information to provide more substance to what we've already stated in this complaint. It is that more substance that's going to show the actual malice the extent of how the false statements spread through social media and snowballed and grew like she said it did. 
all of that is what's going to be on the table in this. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It's also interesting to see more of these cases come forward. I, I, I think in the last few years, I've seen more defamation cases than I had in the past. I think people are just saying, you know what? It's my profession, it's my life, it's my family, and it's just not right what you're doing. And so we're gonna go to court, we're gonna let a ju jury decide. All right, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and mwah, peace.